so you'll uh, you'll get to see that we're going to have some prayer time at the end but Ephesians 6 and I'm going to continue the series today on the armor of God that we've been in for the last several weeks and so far we've looked at the belt of truth we've looked at the breastplate of righteousness we've looked at the shoes of peace today Ephesians 6 verse 16 above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So the first three pieces of armor that we dealt with, if you, if you remember, if you read the verses prior, the command was put on. Put on the belt of truth. Put on. Put on that, whatever that was. Put on the breastplate. Put on the, the, she, the, the shoes of peace. And this, if in this command here, it said to, uh, to hold up, to take the shield of faith. The, the New Living Translation says, hold up. You don't put on the shield. You pick up the shield. You hold up the shield of faith. We, we've been seeing the last several weeks that this armor, Paul is adapting this from the armor of the Roman soldier. And so here, the Roman soldier's shield measured roughly two and a half feet wide by four feet long. So it was a good-sized shield. And during the battle, when there was a, a barrage of, of arrows or javelin or spears would, would come launching at the soldier, it was big enough to where he could crouch down behind the shield, and the shield would, would protect him. Oftentimes, the, the enemy, uh, the way, you know, we have missiles and bombs and, and all of that, well, they would, they would put a tip on it that was flammable, and they would light the end of the tip of the arrow, and they would launch it. And so it says, the, the hold up the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the devil. Often the soldier would take the shield and would either put leather or some type of animal skin on it and dip it in water. So that if there was a barrage of flaming arrows flying at them, they could get behind that shield, and when it would hit that, that wet skin, it would be quenched. It would quench the fiery arrows that was flying at them. And in our spiritual battles, Satan is shooting fiery darts at us, flaming arrows. You know, it, 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 he doesn't just shoot arrows. It's flaming arrows. I, I bet some of you had flaming arrows shot at you this week. <laughs> flaming arrows. Arrows of sickness and depression and circumstance, arrow after arrow, attack after attack. But the Bible says that, that to quench those flaming arrows that the enemy shoots at us, we hold up the shield of faith. I've got four simple principles of faith that we apply, that we need to learn, that we need to apply, and this is, this is what teaches us how to raise the shield of faith. You know, it's not just it's not just enough to say, I have faith. I have faith. Well, there, there are some principles. To the world can have a level of faith. But godly faith, biblical faith, is different than worldly faith. So here's four simple principles. Number one, the first principle, faith is based on the truth of God's word. It's based on truth, the truth of God's word. A simple definition of faith is this, acting as if God actually telling the truth. Faith, acting as if God is telling the truth. That God is believing that God will actually do what he said he would do. We saw a couple weeks ago with the belt of truth. Remember, the belt of truth was the first piece of armor because truth is what stabilizes the rest of the armor. Without truth, the rest of the armor, you've got you to have a belt on to stabilize the rest of your wardrobe. <laughs> So you got to put on truth to stabilize the rest of the armor. And the same principle applies to faith. Faith has to be connected, tied to truth. If you don't know, if you won't act on God's truth, the truth of God's word, the shield of faith won't work for you. What is truth? I gave this definition. Truth is simply God's viewpoint on a matter. Truth is how God views things. Faith is acting as if he's telling the truth. Truth is what God says about that thing. God's word is the final word. That's truth. God's viewpoint, it, that, that's truth. We find his viewpoint in his word. John 
Uh, Jesus said in John 8, 32, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if you put these two verses together, say faith comes through hearing, knowing, and responding to the truth of God's word. Faith comes through hearing, knowing, and responding to the truth of God. Now, this is a crucial principle to, to get because people will often say, well, well, I've got faith to do this. I've got faith to do that. I got faith. I'm, I'm building up my faith. But, but then if that thing doesn't happen, that, that thing they have faith for, if it doesn't happen, oftentimes that same person will get upset with God. God, why didn't you honor my faith? Or maybe they'll become condemned. Well, I, I, I didn't have enough faith. Oh, no, what, what, what's wrong with this? The problem wasn't God, wasn't God. It's not that God didn't honor your faith. The problem is even that you had weak faith. The problem is that your faith wasn't connected to the truth. Faith has to be connected to the truth of God's Word. Too many people have faith in their faith. You, don't, you, you can't even have faith in your faith. They have faith in their wishes, faith in their desires. But God's not obligated to grant every wish we wish upon a star, is He? He's not obligated to grant our wishes. God's not a genie in a bottle, is he? Some Christians treat him like a genie. Well, I need something, so let me pull him out of his bottle, rub it, come on out, grant me this wish. I have faith for this wish. And then they put him back, toss him back into the bottle. We can have all the faith in the world, but if our faith is not tied to truth, it won't accomplish anything. The kind of faith that gets results is the kind that operates according to to the truth of God's word. It cannot operate independently from God's word. Now let me say this though, because it doesn't mean that we can't ask God for the impossible. It doesn't mean that we can't believe God for big things. It, it, it doesn't mean that we can't believe God for the miraculous. Uh, the, the word says all things are possible to those who believe. Of course we can ask God for the miraculous. Of course we can believe for the impossible. But when we ask, here, here, here's, here's the thing. When we ask, we have to keep our heart and our motives tied to the truth of God's word. Are you looking for the impossible to build your kingdom, for your pleasure, for your glory, or are you asking, believing God for the impossible so that God could get the glory? See, we're, we're talking about being tied to the truth. You know, there's just some things that aren't in the Bible. I mean, what do we do about a house? Can we believe for a house? Can we, can we ask God for a car? Can we ask God for this? Can, uh, of course you can. But, but, but you've, got, you've got to keep your heart and your motive still guided by truth, connected to truth. James 4, verse 3 says, even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You, you want only what will give you pleasure. I know I, I know I harp on this a lot, but I just loathe the seeker-friendly social gospel, prosperity gospel that, that a lot of the people or, or the televangelists are spewing all that stuff. I, I, I don't like it because I think it's a perversion of truth. The motive, the heart is not based on... The, the motives of that kind of theology, it, it's, it's, the motive is about self. It's selfish desires. It's, it's what I can get. It's, it's greed. I mean, you, you know, greed, you got to... You pour money into to this, I'll, I'll get a handkerchief, I'll bless a handkerchief, I'll give it back to you, and you'll have a, a harvest of $10 million coming in and a new Cadillac and... Blah, blah, blah. I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, I don't like that because it's wrong. I used to actually believe a little bit of that, but I'm glad I got out. What happened, what happened is, what happens when the thing doesn't come and the same people, that they get condemned about that if they don't see or they, or they get mad at God. See, the motives, the heart has to be tied to, to truth. Now, now, obviously, on the flip side, we do believe God blesses, don't we? We believe God financially blesses. 
We believe God healed. We pray for healing. We, we pray for, for the, the miracles. You know, I've seen some of those, some of those people will actually will say that, that if you're not walking in, in wealth and perfect health, it means you don't have enough faith. Anybody ever heard that? Your faith, you got, your faith is lacking if you get sick. If somebody got COVID, your faith is lacking. That's hogwash. There's good people of faith that got COVID. Not everybody in here's got COVID or, or the shot or something, right? Don't, 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 don't just because you don't, you, don't, you don't have all the money in the bank or you're not operating in perfect health, it's, it's, it's not necessarily because of your faith. I don't like that stuff. But God does heal. God does prosper. Here's the point I want you to understand. The point is don't judge your faith by your circumstances. Don't judge your faith by your finances or your health. That, that's not the gauge of faith. The gauge of faith is, is your faith tied to truth? Is it tied to truth? So faith has to be tied. Go on and believe for the miraculous. Go on and pray for healing and believe for healing and believe that God's going to bless you. But keep your heart and motives tied to truth. You understand what I'm saying here? The second point, faith is not based on feelings. Faith is not based on feelings. If faith is tied to your feelings, you only have as much faith as you feel, then your faith is empty. You have empty faith. You know that a person can actually feel full of faith but have no faith. You can actually feel faith less but be very full of faith. Don't judge your faith by your feelings. It is not based on your feelings. For example, let's say you're watching a horror movie, which I don't want you to watch, okay? <laughs> I don't like watching them. But let's say, you're, let's just say it's a zombie, okay? This is just an example. It's a, it's a zombie movie. And you're watching this thing, and the why you're watching, you know it. You know it's fake. You know the, you know those zombies aren't real. You know what's going on is not real. Flesh eating, coming out, eating people's flesh. You know that's not real. But when you're watching it, something can, you'll jump. Cover, you might even cover your eyes. You're 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 squinching and and squirming. You you, you might even scream if if a zombie jumps out. You know it's fake, but you're still feeling this thing. Let's say afterwards you go to bed. You're laying in bed. You're, you're still thinking about those zombies. Those zombies are running through your mind. You're, you're checking up under the bed, making sure there's not a zombie that's going to come out and stick my hand out from under the bed. You can't sleep. Let's say you do fall asleep. You do fall asleep. Then you start having nightmares. See, here's what's happened. The director of that, fi of that film has manipulated your feelings to, in essence, make you believe a lie. You know it's fake, but he's got you tricked. Your feelings are, are you, you're believing this lie. So the only way to overcome, to get over, to, to get over this, is that truth has to overcome feelings. See, faith that is based on feeling is actually based on a lie. It's not based on truth. The devil wants you to have feeling faith because feeling faith is based on lies. He wants you to feel like you're weak and incapable, even though truth says you're strong in the Lord. Be strong and correct. He wants you to feel like weak. He, he wants you to, to feel like you can't do it. You can't make it, even though truth says you can do all things through Christ. He wants you to feel condemned, unloved, rejected. God don't want me. God will not accept. He wants you to feel that way, even though truth says that you are accepted or loved in the beloved. See, faith is never based on how much you feel. Faith is about acting on the truth, whether you feel it or not. That's faith. It's not based on feelings. Faith is not even on logic. 
and reasoning and rationalizing. That's hard for, for math whizzes like Katie, algebra and all these logic reason the teachers that are you know a lot of scientists logic reason just super brilliant people faith is not based on logic faith is not based on reasoning second corinthians 5 7 says for we walk by faith not by sight in other words if we have to see it feel it reason it rationalize it you're not exercising faith anyone can believe in something they can see or feel, or reason, or rationalize. Doesn't take faith if you actually see it right in front of you, does it? That's not faith. Faith is about believing even though we can't see, feel, reason, rationalize it. Romans chapter 4, verse 18, listen to this. It says, even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead, and so was Sarah's womb. Abraham, look at verse 20. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger and in this, he brought glory to God. Verse 21, he was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Reason said there's no way. Logic said it's impossible for a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman to conceive and have a baby. That's what logic said. But Abraham wasn't moved by logic and reason and feelings. He was moved by the promise of God. He was moved by what God said. And, 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 and I guess I just want to tell you this this morning. If, if you would just stop trying to rationalize everything and, and reason, and if you would just get, put your emotions and your feelings aside, and if you would just stand on what God has said, regardless of how you I guarantee that shield will start being lifted up, and those darts will stop penetrating your soul. The, the, those darts of depression and that they're coming they're coming you you cannot reason with faith you just got to believe what god has said you know david he didn't say i see therefore i believe he said i believe therefore i'm going to speak it out number three here's the third point faith is the point of access not the source of power you're going to have to think with me on this one. This is, this is an important principle. Faith is the access. It's not the power. Faith is not the force that makes God move on your behalf. See, I've heard people call faith a force. There's books on the force of faith, the power of faith. But think about this. If, if faith is actually the power, then that means, if faith is the power that, that, so we can get from God, it means we're going to be on this never-ending quest trying to get more faith. If faith, if, if faith is the power, it means faith is actually a work. It means the more faith I get, the more I can get from God. But faith is not a power. It's not a force. Faith is the access to what God has already promised. Think about this verse. You probably know it by heart. Ephesians 2.8. You know, you've, you've heard preacher after preacher say, well, saved by faith. Saved by faith. But, but I want to, it, it's amazing how Scripture messes with a good sermon. <laughs> it's amazing when you actually read the Scripture how it can, just, it, it can just mess us up from things that we think. Let's, let's read Ephesians 2, 8. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. 
Did you notice we're not saved by faith? Faith is not the power that saves you. Your, your faith doesn't save you. What does it say we're saved by? Grace. Grace is the... Faith is the point of access to salvation. Grace is the power that makes it happen. Faith can't save you. Only the grace of God can save you. If faith could save you, that means you could earn your salvation. If you read verse 9, it says, Not of works, not even the faith. It says, Not of works, lest anyone should boast. That's why, you know, that, that seeker for that, that movement I was telling you about, you got a lot of boasters about faith, boasters about faith. My faith, my faith, my, uh, my faith. No, you, your faith has nothing to, your faith is just the access to receive what grace has already provided. Grace is the power. Faith accesses it. Concerning the promises of God. The power to obtain, you know, God, the, the, the Word of God has thousands and thousands of promises available to us that we can receive. Concerning those promises, the power to obtain the promise is not in our faith. It's not our faith that, that gives the power for the promises to come to pass. The power's in the Word. The power is in the promise itself. The power is in what God has said. Faith only accesses what God has provided. You following this? See, this lightens the load when it comes to faith. Striving for more faith. Stri you're, you're living condemned. I don't, I, why, why? I got to get more faith. I got to get more faith. No, you just got to, you just got to access your faith and apply your faith to what God has already. The power is in the word of God. I'm just receiving what he's all, I only want what he's already promised. I, I'm just, the access, not the power. Do you know that the heroes of the... Oh, let, let, me, let me say this. So, so, in understanding that, in reality, the answer is not in you obtaining more faith. The Bible actually says we've all... Romans actually says we've already been dealt a measure of faith. Do you know you actually have all the faith you'll ever need to obtain everything that God has promised you? You've already got the faith. You don't need more faith... You need to know more truth. You need to know more word. The word's not going to work for you. The truth is not going to work for you unless you dig it out and claim it for yourself. You wondering why, why you're not receiving this? Why you're not, why ain't I getting my heel? Why ain't this? Why this? Why, why is all hell breaking loose? Why, in, in the meantime, your Bible's just collecting. You don't know more. You don't need more faith. You need to get your butt in the word. And your eyes. <laughs> I'm telling you, church, that, that the answer power is in the truth of the Word of God. The heroes of the faith of the Bible, do you know they're not heroes because they have more faith than you and I? They're heroes because they knew the truth. They, ac they, they accessed those promises by their faith. Abraham believed. By faith, Noah he built the ark. They're, 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 Abel offered a perfect sacrifice. So they're claiming what God has already promised us. So, so number one, faith is based on the truth of God's Word. Faith is not based on feelings. Faith is the point of access, not the source of power. And, and lastly and most importantly, Jesus is the source of faith. These simple principles, when you learn these and, and learn how to apply these, this, this will keep that shield lifted up above you. Jesus is the source of faith. Hebrews 12, verse 2 says, Fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. Other translations say he's the author. He's the finisher. That means that Jesus is the complete embodiment of faith from beginning to end. If Jesus isn't the object of your faith, you don't have true faith. All of our faith centers around who Jesus is. 
in what Jesus has done through his cross, through his resurrection. 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. What's the victory that has overcome the world? What's it say? Faith. Our faith is the victory. Who's our faith in? What's our faith in? Is it in our faith? Is it in our wishes? Is it in our ability to overcome the things of the... Is it in our ability to overcome depression and overcome sickness and overcome all the family issues? It's in the victory that Jesus has already accomplished. Our faith is not in us. Our faith is not in our faith. Our faith is not in our... We, you, you can't overcome anything. Our faith is in the overcomer himself who already came, overcame that thing you're going through. You know, you, the reality is everything that we go through in life, every, no, no, matter, no matter how big the thing is, strongholds, addictions, what, whatever it is, do you really believe that Jesus already overcame it? Isn't that something? <laughs> Everything that we're going through right now, Jesus has already overcame it. We put our trust in Him, the one who has overcome it all. Did you know that sickness and death has already been overcome? 1 Corinthians 15, 55 says, Oh, death, where's your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Verse 57, but thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. He already overcame that sickness. He already overcame that thing. We just got to put our trust in his overcoming power. I close with this. Close with this. In wrapping everything up, so in essence, the shield of faith is actually a person. The shield of faith is actually Jesus. If faith embodies all, if, if Jesus is the full ingredient of faith, then that means the shield is not an it. The shield is a he. It's a person. Above all, raise up Jesus. Didn't Jesus say, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men? Lift Jesus up. Lift Jesus up. Raise Jesus up. And let him quench those fiery darts. You know, on the cross, he already bore everything that you're going through, all the sin, sickness, death, hell, all was... He already... We just lift up Jesus. Lift up the blood of Jesus. Remember, remember how, the, how the soldier would, would dip the, the shield in water to snuff out the, the darts? Well, the, the shield, Jesus, has been dipped in blood and his blood quenches and puts out those flaming darts. We lift up the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood over your family. Plead the blood over your circumstances. Lift up the cross. Colossians 2.15 says that through the cross he disarmed all principalities. Lift up the empty grave, the, the resurrection power of Jesus. Lift up praises to his, raise up praises to his name. When, you know, the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 that when the Israelites, that when Judah lifted up praises, God defeated the enemy. That's what it means to lift up Jesus. He's your Savior, but He's also your shield. You get it by grace, not by your faith. You're not moved by what you feel. I believe it. I believe it. I don't have to reason it and see it. And I just keep Jesus at the center of everything. You know, if you notice every single one of my messages, don't they always come back to Jesus, the gospel, the cross, the resurrection, the blood? Because that's our shield. I don't understand it, but, I, but if I just keep meditating on the empty tomb and the cross and the blood and the overcome, I, 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 just, I just feel power.
inside my soul. I want to ask you to bow your heads. This isn't magic. This isn't <laughs> this isn't this mega complicated subject. You just live in your life as if God is actually telling the truth. <laughs> I'm living my life based upon what he has said. I'm exercising my faith to access what he's already promised. It's not in me obtaining more faith, it's me in obtaining a word, more truth. The problem isn't your lack of faith, the problem is your unbelief. Huh? Keep your heads bowed. Think about that. The problem, the problem, it's not that you need more faith. You just need to stop doubting God. The Amplified Version of Romans 4 said, No unbelief or distrust made him waver. He didn't allow unbelief to, to creep in. Maybe you're here today, maybe you're listening online, and you've never received Jesus as your Savior. Would you please receive him today? You're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised tomorrow. You could leave today and be ushered into eternity. You have one shot to get it right. There's not a purgatory where you get another chance. One shot. If you receive Jesus as Savior, you'll be ushered into the presence of God. If you reject him, you're sending yourself to eternal torment in the lake of fire. But you can receive him today by grace his grace just access what he's already done would you pray with me right now to receive jesus from your heart just just pray jesus i i believe you died for me on the cross jesus i believe you shed your blood for me jesus i know i cannot save myself myself my works won't get me in my faith won't even get me in only your grace can get me in. I'm so dependent upon your grace. Please save me. Just ask him to save you. You don't have to understand the whole doctrine, the theology of, of salvation. Just, oh, save me. I can't save myself. And God, I just pray in Jesus' name that if anyone prayed online or, or in this sanctuary today, I pray that they would, that they would come to me drawn to me to, to another leader a pastor an elder so that we can walk with them and welcome them to the family of god and so that we can disciple them in jesus name and now father i just want to pray now that these next few moments that we would really get serious as Lindsay said that we put our game face on and that we would utilize these next few moments to exercise our faith to access what you promised in your word. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. I want you to stand to your feet.